Hi, in this session I'm going to show you how to calculate the start date or the end date with the workday function. So basically what the workday function is given a start date and given the amount of days and uh, if you have any holidays in between it will give you the end date. So for this example let's say that we started a project on November 11th, 2014 and we're going to think that the, the project is going to have 13 days, basically 13 work days to, comp to, to get finished. And we want to calculate really quickly what is going to be the end date, um, notwithstanding holiday. So there's two, this is a US based calendar holiday. Uh, there's a holiday on the 11th and a holiday on the 27th. And we want to calculate the, the eventual work day that we would have from a start date of November 10th based on 13 days. So we would use the workday function that's equal workday. We click on that. And then the start day, we can enter a start day or we can just kind of bring a start date over from a cell. And then the next one would be the days. So we're going to click on B2 for the days. So this is going to assume uh, work days in, in, in essence. And if we have any holidays in between, we're going to select this range. So we're going to select this range. It's going to select it for us. Those are the holidays. Now after I press the uh, enter the closing parentheses, it's going to give us a non-value. And that's because I did not include the uh, days here. So I'm going to go ahead and click the days, put a comma in there, and now that's complete. So now it's going to figure out that the ending date is going to be the 1st of December. So let's count how many days that's. So we, if we started out at the 10, it's going to count the day after that starting day. So 11 is not going to count because that's the holiday. So it's going to be count from 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So let's skip the 27th. 13. So the 13th day is 12, 1. Now that's how we can count if we count forward. But what if we wanted to count backwards? So what if we say that, you know, we have a date of 12, 1, 14, and we want to count back 13 days. So to, to, in order to count backwards, we want to say, you know, let's say we have an end date and we want to look at our business days prior to that to finish this. When should we start something? So we can actually put a negative here, minus 13, and also include these holidays. If we include these holidays, we'll put that there. And then what is our start date? So basically it's the same thing. The only thing that changed is we entered a negative number there. So we have work day, we have our start date, we have our negative days, we're, we're going to work behind, then we have our holidays, and close parentheses, press enter, it's going to bring back 1110. So let's say that we did not have this holiday. Let's delete that. It's going to bring back 1111. It's going to, it's going to count that day now. It's going to count the day. It's not going to miss that day. So that's how we would do it. Let me control Z to undo that. So that's how we do this with uh, trying to figure out a start date or end date. So if we wanted to figure out based on some date, if we wanted to work forward or backward, when we would have to start or when would that, when would be our ending date uh, based on business days. So this is how you do it with that. But what if we're in a situation where the weekends, because what happens is it doesn't count the weekends here. What if we have a situation where we're in a different country where the weekend is only one day. So there is also another function and it's called the Workdays International function. So if I press equal Workday and click on the second option, Workday International here, it's going to tell me my start date, which is the same as I did before. What are the days? Let's say, let's, let me choose eight days. And now we have this other argument where we can enter the weekends. Wh which days are the weekends? Let's say, that, for example, in certain countries, Sunday is the only weekend, right? So if we click on that, it's going to bring up that 11 value, which represents Sunday's the only weekday. So it's going to count Sunday off. It won't count Sundays. And let's say that there's no holidays here. So if we press the close the parentheses and press enter, now we're going to have 1119. So what it's going to do now, it's going to count from here. One, two, three, four, five, counts that Saturday, six, seven, eight. We, so it stops on the 19th. So that's what we can do for uh, countries or in situations where the weekends are only one day or they're, they're different weekends. So you saw the option where we have this weekend which is denoted by some numbers that will say it's either a, a Sunday or a Saturday or maybe it's a Friday. So you can choose that here with the Workday International function. And also also applies if you wanted to work backward in the same example that we did here 
where it's minus 13. We could, we could do minus 8 here, and it'll, it'll work backwards. So there's how you would calculate start or end dates um, based on the workday function. It's kind of a very nifty function if you wanted to do some quick calculations on when your start date is based on some business days. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.